Welcome to Statics. Centroids by integration. We are returning to centroids to look at a more general form for finding them using integration. We previously used these equations to find the x and y dimensions to the centroid of a shape from some origin point. We use these equations by breaking a complex shape into simpler areas for which we knew the centroid locations. We can use these equations to find the centroid of this shape defined by y equals some function of x. We can approximate the actual solution by dividing the area into three rectangles. The centroid of each rectangle will be at its center. We will know the width of each rectangle, so we will be able to find the x tilde dimensions. We take the height of each rectangle by evaluating the function at each x tilde location. We then compute each rectangle area as its width times its height. With this information, we can compute x bar. The y tilde dimension for each rectangle is simply half the rectangle height. With this information, we can compute y bar. However, here, x bar and y bar are only approximations of the actual values because the rectangles I'm using are not a perfect fit of the shape. I can improve my approximation by using more and narrower rectangles. I can get an exact solution if I divide the shape into infinitely many rectangles, which is essentially integration. The summations in our x bar and y bar equations become integrals over the area of the shape. Each little rectangle is an infinitesimally small dA with a width dx. Since that dx is so small, the x tilde dimension to the centroid is x. The height of the dA rectangle is then equal to y evaluated at the distance x. So dA is the function evaluated at x times dx. The y tilde dimension is then half the height. The integral forms for x bar and y bar are the general forms. While these equations work for any shape, since the shape functions we will be working with in this class can usually be defined with polynomials, then we can use this formula for evaluating our definite integrals.